the heart, tapping into the power of the heart. The power of the heart, finding your inner wisdom. The power of the heart, finding the power of the heart. The power, the power of the heart, power of the heart. Let us find the power of the heart. The power of the heart. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Yuru Chao. You are tuning in to the Power of the Heart on Dai Radio. In Taiwan, a city volunteer, Mr. Liao, used to live for his investment, which constantly put him in a bad mood if he lost in the stock market. Also, TV he and his wife watch at home, be it news or drama, made them angry all the times. With his daughter's encouragement, Mr. and Mrs. Liao start watching Dai TV, a wholesome TV channel, and volunteer at recycling station. Now they are happy recycling volunteers. With Cici in their life, they turn their life around and see the positive and inspiring sides of life. In another country, wholesome program in Dai TV also help a family to transform their life and deal with their pain and suffering. In Malaysia, Mrs. Fang lost her husband in 2006. With six young children and an elderly mother-in-law to care for, her family was taken under the Cici Hardship Assistance Program. After starting to watch Dai TV about two years ago, they slowly learned to let go of their sorrow and look forward to a positive future. Mrs. Fang is even training to become a volunteer, so she can give out herself to help others, rather than always just on the receiving end. Dai TV guides viewers to get a bigger picture about life and our world. People and their life stories of modern sutra with profound drama and dharma in there. We can see obstacles to awakening, namely affliction. Unwholesome actions and karmic retribution in these life stories. They serve as mirror to us. We must prevent our errors, and if they can do it and turn their life around, we can do it too. Thanks to Dai TV, many viewers around the world are living a calmer and wiser life. In our program today, we'll begin with a reading of select verses from the Sutra adaptation of the Water Repentance Text. This reading is provided by Dharma Master De Ling. Then, after a short break, we'll discuss this teaching with Miss Ray Hongcai. Lovers of Finland. To hum this sweet refrain, even after youth and laughter cease to reign, for it recalls a night when hearts were unrestrained, when the dawn, the stars were gone. Tapping into the power of the heart, finding your inner wisdom, finding the power of the heart. The power of the heart, Appendix Two. Today we will be listening to select verses from the sutra adaptation of the Water Repentance Text. The Water Repentance Text teaches us that if we can repent for the three obstacles to our awakening, 
are afflictions, unwholesome action, and karmic retribution, we can cleanse our heart and mind of impurities. After repenting, we must prevent the repetition of our errors by making vows to transform ourselves and begin anew. The following verses are taken from the repentance and making vows sections of the sutra adaptation. The original Chinese verses were composed by Mr. Wang Duanzhen, based on Dharma Master Zheng Yin's teachings. The obstacle of afflictions. Our afflictions originate from the greed, anger, ignorance, arrogance, and doubt in our heart and mind. If we can repent for having these unwholesome thoughts, our afflictions can be eliminated. Let us repent for our greed for fame, wealth, and power. Let us repent for our anger and bad temper, which make us want to hurt people. Let us repent for our ignorance and lack of understanding of the law of karma. Let us repent for our arrogance, which makes us look down on others. Let us repent for doubting the Buddha's teachings, which leads to deluded notions. Let us repent for our attachment to self and our delusions of permanence in life. Let us repent for taking up with unwholesome friends and doing bad deeds. Let us repent for being stingy and uncharitable and for not forming good affinities with people. Let us repent for being domineering, unreasonable, forgetting to be gentle and becoming angry easily. Let us repent for being jealous of others and for unkind actions made in envy. Let us repent for not following the truth, which makes us drift in the sea of samsara. Let us repent for our blindness and delusions, which make us undergo the suffering of rebirth in the six realms. After repenting for our unwholesome thoughts, we make vows to begin anew and replace unwholesome behaviors with wholesome ones. Then afflictions will not arise again in our heart and mind. We vow to overcome our greed and selfish desires by sowing seeds of kindness in people's hearts. We vow to work on our anger and bad temper by spreading love around the world. We vow to dispel our ignorance and delusion by learning the Dharma and doing good deeds. We vow to eliminate our ego and arrogance by cultivating humility and practicing precepts. We vow to uproot our skepticism of the Dharma by developing genuine faith in the Buddha's teachings and the law of karma. We vow to eschew wrong views by nurturing loving kindness, compassion, joy, and equanimity in our hearts. We vow to transcend our jealousy and narrow-mindedness by respecting and learning from people and emulating their good. We vow to do good and cultivate ourselves diligently, as life is impermanent. We vow to practice the 37 A's to awakening, so we may purify our heart and mind. We vow to develop the Bodhi mind, the awakened mind, so we may have both compassion and wisdom to help all beings. The obstacle of unwholesome action. We commit unwholesome actions through our deeds, our words, and our thoughts, the actions of body, speech, and mind. The following are some examples of unwholesome actions to repent for. Let us repent for killing living creatures and committing acts of violence to harm others. Let us repent for killing other creatures accidentally or for sport and for abusing animals, not realizing that all creatures are equal. Let us repent for giving rise to greed when enticed by money and for failing to observe the precepts. Let us repent for being deeply entrenched in desire and losing ourselves in the sea of lust. Let us repent for lying to secure personal gains and for speaking meanly to hurt others. Let us repent for speaking insincere words of flattery and causing discord through gossip and talebearing. Let us repent for giving rise to greed when our eyes have come in contact with pleasant sights. 
let us repent for letting our ears pursue pleasant sounds and sweet words, which can cloud our good judgment. Let us repent for giving rise to unwholesome thoughts when we come into contact with pleasant fragrances. Let us repent for eating all kinds of living creatures in our attachment to taste and the desires of our palate. Let us repent for our desire for fine and smooth textures as our body pursues the contact of touch. Let us repent for having a deluded mind as we filled it with false views, perceptions, and negative emotions. After repenting for our unwholesome actions of body, speech, and mind, we can prevent repeating our errors by making vows to change our ways so as to not create more negative karma. We vow to protect life by not killing and by eliminating our hatred and resentment. We vow to be vegetarian life after life so that animals do not have to be killed. We vow to be content by reducing our desires and transcending thoughts of stealing, jealousy, and greed. We vow to be generous and charitable by not being stingy and greedy. Through the practice of giving, we accomplish our spiritual cultivation. We vow to uphold the precepts, to keep our heart pure, and to be free from lustful thoughts. We vow to realize that desire acts like a shackle that restrains us, and to let go of our greed for wealth, sex, fame, food, and sleep. We vow to avoid speaking gossip and abusive words, instead speaking good words in a gentle voice. We vow to treat others with sincerity by not lying or spreading hearsay. We vow to speak beneficial words that can bring harmony and reconciliation among people. We vow to be humble and to be prudent in our speech, not exaggerating or using flattery. We vow to purify our six sense organs so we won't be deluded when encountering the external environment. We vow to end our unwholesome ways and prevent future unwholesome actions. The obstacle of karmic retribution. If we can repent for the unwholesome ways which bring about such karmic retribution, there is hope to break out of this vicious cycle. Let us repent for the wrongs we've committed through our body, speech, and mind, leading to the karmic retribution of reincarnation in the hell realm. Let us repent for committing unwholesome acts instead of practicing goodness, leading to the karmic retribution of reincarnation in the animal realm. Let us repent for our killing, our self-indulgence and greed, leading to the karmic retribution of reincarnation in the hungry ghost realm. Let us repent for leading an unwholesome life and acting arrogantly, which lead us to develop the personalities of Asuras. Let us repent for pursuing profit and self-gain, thus giving rise to unwholesome thoughts which dispel wholesome thoughts. Let us repent for being cruel to animals by hunting and harming them. One day we will reap karmic retribution. Let us repent for breaking the law, being undisciplined and rebellious, and not being filial to our parents nor abiding by moral ethics. Let us repent for not respecting the Buddha or his teachings, and for doubting that the Dharma can liberate living beings from suffering. Let us repent for the obstacles of afflictions, unwholesome action, and karmic retributions that we have created, and let us dedicate any merit we have to all living beings. We have gone astray before, but now that we have encountered the Dharma, we can turn ourselves around. After repenting, we make vows to create a better world with less suffering. We vow to turn the realm of hell into a pure land by eliminating karmic obstacles. We vow to turn our animosity to goodwill and transform violence into kind actions. We vow to help all living beings in need so they can attain peace and happiness. We vow to harbor no thoughts of killing and help all creatures coexist in harmony. We vow to get rid of our bad habitual tendencies and our deluded thoughts and perceptions. 
We vow to mitigate disasters and epidemics so people won't suffer from pain, illness, and loss. We vow to help provide abundant supplies of food and clothing, so people won't suffer from starvation and cold. We vow to bring harmony and peace to society, so there will be no wars in this world. We vow to spread the teachings of the Buddha, so people can understand life's principles and eschew misguided views. We vow to walk the Bodhisattva path and help inspire the mind of awakening in people. Hello, everyone. My name is Ray Hong Tai.、Um, I'm from Washington D.C., but originally I came from Taiwan. My favorite Jingzi aphorism is "知足感恩，善解包容 means contentment, gratitude, understanding, and endurance. This teaching from Master Zheng Yan helped me to recenter myself and continue serving and become a better person. May wisdom and inspiration be with you always. You are listening to the Power of the Heart on Da Ai Radio. Our special guest today is Miss Ray Hong Tai. She lives in Gaithersburg, Maryland, and works as school library media specialist at Lakelands Park Middle School. She also teaches research methods and TV show production. She maintains media center website for the school. Also, she teaches for about twenty years in the U.S. Welcome to the program, Ray. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Let's begin with why do you choose to volunteer with Ziji?、Um, I was thinking,、uh, I was looking for a spiritual path,、uh, master since high school. However, I didn't join the Ziji Foundation until I became a single mom with two young children. Ziji Foundation is focusing on self improvement and universal love. It coincides with what I believe, and this is the reason that I choose. To volunteer with Ziji, Broad Acres Elementary has about ninety-five percent of free reduced meal.、Um, the students who, you know,、um, who come from poor、um, families, and seventy-five percent of the students speak English as a second language. Many of the students couldn't read, and many of the、uh, parents didn't know how to help their children. Um, because they couldn't speak English, so I propose to have one-on-one tutoring program to support students to improve their spelling, their reading,、um, writing, and math skills.、Um, I recruited over forty volunteers and two about two hundred middle and high school students to serve first and second graders、um, weekly past five years.、Um, education is a very It's a fundamental.、Um, it's a fundamental for a person's success in life. Actually, even third, fourth, fifth grade, we had kids even in middle school because I'm teaching in middle school, and some of the students they are still struggling. They cannot read fluently, and it's very sad.、Um, and some kids because they were behind in elementary, so in middle school. They are in special classes and they had trouble reading, so a lot of time I would need to provide some resources like read aloud features. You know, they can help kids to understand what they are reading,、um, know how to answer questions. So、um, yeah, it's very sad. 
and your experience, your professional experience and skills really come in handy、yes. when when you volunteer with the、mm-hmm. Z Foundation because through the book giving project, you actually notice a problem that require. It's a greater problem. They require our energy and our yes. time yes. to help people. And like you say, education is very important、mm-hmm. if they want to have a better life.、Mm-hmm. So if you help them while they are young, they get a better chance of、yeah. achieving the goal in their life. And I can share one example、um, because in the beginning of school year, like usually in October, the school open like、uh, the end of August. And then the beginning of October, then we will start having like a first session of tutoring. And usually the first session, I invite parents to attend because I always had like a parent meetings. And I would tell parents about the importance of tutoring and also how important education is for their children. And when I mentioned that, you know, that's the Important way to change their life, and some parents they cry because they were, you know, they are struggling. A lot of them are immigrants; they don't have a lot of education, or they don't know the language, and they might have two, three jobs, or they don't have any jobs, and they cannot support the family. So it's really important that,、um, you know, if we. We focus on education, like from ground zero. You know, first grade, second grade, when they perform well, and then they can, you know, they can do well continuously. Actually, the program、um, help the tutors as well, because they are middle high school students, and you know, like teenagers,、um, they are willing to get up early morning on Saturdays every week. And some of them helped me for five years, and they become grateful, and they realize being a teacher is not easy. Being parents is not easy, and they the the parents really appreciate the program because their kids change,、um, you know, and so it's really nice. So it's a program for everybody, not、yes. only for the children receiving、mm-hmm. the tutoring service,、yes. but also for parents of the children who are receiving the tutoring change,、yes. and for the tutors and parents of the tutors. It's、yeah. basically whoever come in t- contact with this program、yeah. benefited in their way、mm-hmm. somehow. Actually, a lot of the parents they become、uh, volunteers、uh, because they participated and they see what we do, how how much we care for the children. And they become volunteers.、Mm-hmm. That is really unique. I think this is probably the best education out there for for the tutors because、um, nowadays for children to wake up early during the weekend、mm-hmm. time, it's、mm-hmm. very difficult. It's I, I very think、hard. when we、um, talk about education, we have to talk about the、um, Buddha's teaching、mm-hmm. for us. And like you mentioned, for for your reason to to kind of search out spiritual teacher. That you know how important it is to have those、uh, spiritual guidelines in life,、mm-hmm. and we all we all know that the sutra innumerable meanings are very important to to Dharma Master Zheng Yan、mm-hmm. and her founding of Ziji Foundation. We have study group, we have worship, so I try to attend those.、Um, and what I learn is, you know, most people have worries. Most people had troubles,、um, but the sutra will help us overcome. Sometimes, like my coworkers' parents pass away, then I will share, you know. And also,、um, like my one of my best friend always had trouble with her husband, and I try to share that, you know, instead of focus on his weaknesses, it probably better that we are grateful for this. You know, experience and how we can focus on ourselves, improve ourselves, change ourselves, not expecting expecting others to change, and just by helping other people、um, in needs,、uh, we realize how lucky we are.、Um, so through your sharing, you help others to kind of turn their perspective around a little bit. To、mm-hmm. see things in a different light,、yes. 
And that usually help people to find a way out、yes. of their worries and、mm-hmm. affliction. Thank you very much, Ray, for your time. Our time is up today. We'll be listening to this book over the next several episodes. Please join us next time to continue our discussion on the power of the heart. If you want to read this book, we're talking about. You can find a copy of this book in any Jingzi Bookstore and Cafe. For more teaching from Dharma Master Zheng Yan, please tune in next time to our program. Goodbye and have a great day. Each one in this world.